Well, we are back with a brand new Disney Plus Marvel series yet again. This time, it's Secret Invasion, and we have episode one to have a look at. And I've ran out of things to say. There, there's not much to talk about when it comes to this first episode. It was very meandering. It exists. That's that's all I can really say. In a nutshell, it's we're just going to throw as much information as possible at the viewers in a very lazy way. We're not going to gradually, you know, unfold this information. We're just going to throw it at you. And that's that, that takes up the majority of the episode. You know, it's explaining this is this and this is what happened and that's what happened there. And this is this and that's that for, for about half an hour out of a 50 minute episode. That is honestly what it's like. You know, again, you have to, when it comes to exposition, such as explaining what's going on, you have to do it gradually. Otherwise, people just get overwhelmed with information and don't even know what's going on. Unless, like me, you actually go through what's being said, write it down at the same time. That's really the only way you're going to be able to keep up. Because <laughs> it's just, ah, uh, we can't think of a, a compelling way to do this. So let's just go, here's some information. We just dump that on you. Fuck off. That's That seems to be the mentality. It's just it's just laziness. As far as, uh, as Samuel Jackson, as as Nick Fury goes, uh, you, you, you can probably guess what happens in this show. Uh, he is disregarded as nothing more than an old man. He's useless. That's, that's what people literally say to him. Uh, and we don't find out how we got to this place. We, you know, we don't find out. We're told that, oh, I had a I had a crisis of faith. Right. It would have been good to actually see that and see how you got to this point of you're not quite right. You know, that's what you need to do. That's the way I would have done this first episode. You show what Nick Fury has been doing since the last time we left him. And then when he gets the call, because we of course have to do the invasion of the scrolls, then that's then you transition into what you want to do in this show. That's how you should have done it. Not just go have some fucking information and piss off and be happy uh, that we wasted this money on this show. <laughs> but let's go through some of it. I will try to be brief because, as I say, there is there's not really much to talk about. It's a show that exists. Uh, and as I say, I get the feeling it's going to fall off a cliff once we get into the second episode, the third episode. Uh, I, you know, it's just a really boring show. From what I've heard, I think I think critics have seen the first two episode episodes, and I think they say said a similar thing. Just nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. So we start off in Moscow, present day. Where we have Martin Freeman. He's such a great character in the Marvel in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, no, he just he just kind of shows up now and again. So you've got this guy talking over talking a lot of voiceover saying, "What would you do if you realised the people uh, that were closest to you weren't actually what they said they were?" You know, of course, being the scrolls. So we meet this very paranoid guy that. You know, he seems to think he doesn't trust anyone. He doesn't trust sending any of the information he's collected over to the main office. Yet he's going to trust Martin Freeman, at least for now. <laughs> when we know that the scrolls can shapeshift, meaning Martin Freeman could be a scroll. So I don't know why you trust this person. If from your perspective, you think everyone's just a scroll. Uh, the people closest to you that you think you can trust as a scroll. So that's how it starts out. We're told all this information. Apparently, the whole world is at war. It would have been good to see that throughout phase four. But then again, they fucked that up, didn't they? Uh, but apparently, the world is at war. I do, it's just come out of nowhere. <laughs> okay, the world's at war. Um, and then, uh, you know, it becomes very apparent. You know, you get exposition that I, I guess is intended to treat the audience like we're stupid. You have Martin Freeman say, yes, the scrolls can shapeshift. The scrolls are looking for a new home. Yeah, we know this. We already know this. Uh, so already that's just holding people's hands. 
Uh, and then, you know, it's just it's just non-stop exposition after that. Uh, whereabouts are we? So, yeah, after that part, like, well, that guy goes, yeah, you're a scroll. He, go he goes to choke him out. And then Martin Freeman shoots him and we get a big chase through the, the streets and over, over the top of the walls and, and stuff like that. I don't know why it isn't moving. There we go. So it's just this big long chase until this guy falls off the off the thing, and it turns out oh it's a scroll, and that the guy chasing him was Talos, from Captain Marvel I guess. And then they went with they went with an AI intro, I guess it fits as a little weird though, uh, but you know then again it is in theme because it seems like this show is literally written by an AI. There's no heart. There's no soul. Uh, it's just we're gonna do fuck all for fifty minutes, uh, and just oh, and just bash you over the head with information. So that's how it starts off, and then all of a sudden, out of the sky, for some reason, Nick Fury gets beamed down to Earth. That's that's new. That's certainly a new thing. Uh, and you think it's an alien, but no, it's Samuel Jackson. He's back, only to be an old broken man out of nowhere. And we're not going to get to see how he got to that point. Uh, we're just going to have people saying, you're old. <laughs> and that, that's, that's all we're going to do with Nick Fury. He's not going to be in character whatsoever. He's not going to know about things. When he's Nick Fury, he generally knows what's going on. For some reason, Agent Hill hasn't relayed this information. There's a reason for that, because we need to come up with a lazy way to get this information to the audience and we're not going to give them any time to process it. You know, we're not going to do it in a very natural way. So that's that's why Nick Fury doesn't have a clue what's going on. Doesn't have a clue. So he's back down. He gets picked up by Agent Hill. And then he goes straight up to Brit to talk to Talos. Talos said, oh, these plants, you know, they, they adapt to... Uh, they, they've adapted to Earth. And then he goes on to explain overly explain in a very boring way that uh since we last met i was kicked out of the scroll council it's now craven or gravin or gravic that has taken over and he's very upset with you with your samuel jackson because you left you left earth when you were supposed to be finding us a new home and he's taking issue with that and there's now this resistance what they're resisting i i don't know it's not their planet so I don't know what they're resisting. So that's that's the situation. You know, I could go it further into detail, but, you know, get it bored me. It would probably bore you. Uh, I don't recommend this show. Uh, I would recommend the comic book, and I even read the comic book. But I've got a feeling that would uh, that would be well more worth my time to just go and read the fucking comic rather than watching this shit. <sighs> You know, it's it, you know again. It's not even necessarily shit. It's just that they don't really do anything to say say anything about it. It's very just again. It's a show that exists, hasn't done anything yet, hasn't done anything to impress, hasn't done anything to just laugh at, hasn't done anything. It's just it's just a straight line. That's the sort a straight line that doesn't move. That's probably a better way to put it. So yeah, that's so, that, so that's essentially the information we get here. And then we go down into the room with Kobe, Kobe Smulders. And then we get more fucking information thrown at us. Uh, and I was just like, we're, we're 15 minutes in. And we are still doing exposition in a very bad way. In a very bad way. So we're explained that Gravik is now the... He's now on the council of the... The newest member of the council. He preys on the collective rage of young displaced scrolls. They they go into, well, where is he, Samuel Jackson says, because he's not up to speed on any of this, even though he should be. Uh, he should he should already know all this information, but we have to have it. No, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything. Um, so, so they, they know, well, we're in, Ru we're still in Russia. They know that this, this guy here is in Russia. Uh, and then Kobe Smulders again. It's it's not even it's not even like like people having a conversation. It's just I'm gonna say this, you're gonna say that, and it's there's not really much of a connection. There's no connective tissue to the conversation going on. It's like it's it's like three people having separate conversations. 
So Kobe Smolder goes into uh, scrolls are immune, uh, immune to radioactivity. Right, I'm pretty sure Nick Fury knows that considering he has spent time, as he says in this episode, 30 years of experience, hands-on experience with the scrolls. So I think he already knows that. Already knows that. I'm pretty sure the scroll sitting across from you already knows that. So this this isn't new information, maybe to us, but not to the characters you are sitting around with. So it makes no sense for you to say that. You have to come up with better dialogue. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You gotta you gotta be good. You see, you gotta be good. Uh, that's really all it comes down to. So they're like. So that means. Uh, uh, well, she says, and Russia has the most abandoned nuclear power plants in the world, or or on Earth. You know, it's it's funny because the the Talos then goes on to say, uh, and the this this isn't in the books, so they can't don't know where it is. So they they haven't thought of doing a flyby of Russia to figure out right where could they what power plant could the scrolls be hiding in. They haven't done that. They haven't went. Oh, Samuel Jackson's been up in a space a spaceship that came out of nowhere. Uh, we're just going to establish that now that there's a big massive space station, which I believe is the space station uh, we've seen in the Marvels trailer. So he's like he, he, you know you know you must have satellites things like things of that nature where you can figure it out again you can see a power a power plant you can see it you don't you don't need to go oh it's off the books oh right have you not visited any you not thought maybe we'll go and check them out you know we we, we come to the scrolls later on and they don't really they're not really hiding it's like it should be very obvious where they are um. So Nick Fury, of course, not knowing what's going on, uh, they, well, they're acting as if this is how Nick Fury would be. He wouldn't know anything when what he would because he's Nick Fury. Uh, again, if you want to have this make sense, what you have to do is you actually have to show why why he wouldn't be up to speed on any of this information when that is you know generally how he is, how he operates. He knows everything. He's always he's always about ten steps ahead of everybody else. So if you want this to make sense, you have to you have to show us. You have to show us. Maybe you can tell us if you do it in a very compelling way, uh, but you can't just say I I, I don't know. He, he had a crisis, and that's that's about as far you, as far as you go into it. So so then Kobe Smolders goes on to explain. The Agent Ross, Agent Ross's imposter, was covering up schematics for a dirty bomb intercepted by Prescott, the mental guy at the start. Uh, he believed there was new rad a new radical group called Americans Against Russia, which he believed was a skull front for a terrorist attack. Uh, and then Samuel Jackson, he, he doesn't know, know nothing, you see, even though he should. He goes, oh, what? They're trying to start a war with Russia. Yes, that's what I would pull from what what Agent Hill just said. <sighs> Fucking hell, you're not very bright, are you? Even though, again, you should be. Uh, he's like, he's gonna, he's gonna use this or uh, use this. What does he say? He's gonna use this bomb to do it. So it's just him asking questions. You should know it. Uh, does he have materials for that? We find out there was a weapons cache in Kazakhstan where Borat lives. Uh, I, I might as well go and watch fucking Borat. I'd, I'd honestly be better. Better time spent. So, yeah, that's what happened. So they've got the material. I don't know why you'd need to go to fucking Kazakhstan for a dirty bomb. I, I don't know why you'd need to go there to get that. You, you can make them. Oh, but, you know, whatever. Um, but th then Talos goes on to explain, we brought you here for a reason. Because if Graven or Gravik succeeds... It will wipe out your entire species. Uh, now, Sam Jackson is is used to this. Instead, he, he flings back his chair and goes, I'm going for a walk. That's a, that's a, bit, a bit strange that you've done that. I, you know, I've never... <laughs> uh, I, I don't think we've seen him do that with in the Avengers movies, where he just throws a bit of a tantrum. Uh, but he goes for a walk, even though, you know, this is very important. But, hey, go, go and walk off. Go and walk off. Always a good plan. So that's so we've had a load of information. We're now 15 minutes in. It's just been 
full-on exposition. Nothing has actually happened yet. Nothing has happened. I haven't learned anything new about about Agent about Agent Fury because they they just decided. Oh, later on we'll just say oh, he had a he had a crisis of his faith, uh, and that that's all we're going to do for that. Don't need to go much further into it. Uh, no, no, we're not we're not going to do that. So then we go to the White House where we get Rhodey talking to the president. We haven't seen Rhodey in a while. They they luckily uh, well they haven't ruined him yet, have they? They've ruined Wong and, and, and a lot of others. They haven't quite got to Rhodey yet. Maybe this will be the time that they do. So he says to the president, Nick Fury has left the Sabre the Saber space station. And then the president says, what do you mean he left the Sabre space station? Well, exactly what it means. He's left the Sabre space station. Um, but again, it's we, we just need some type of reason to get the president then to say... Agent Fury is building up the most complex aerospace defense system in the history of mankind. So it's just more unnatural exposition when Rhodey already knows this. He already knows. What are you saying that for? You know, most you would expect if all of you know what the situation is, you would say something like, uh, yeah, but that's but he should be up there because it's very important. You know, you have something like that. You don't explicitly, you know, you might as well read a Wikipedia page. That That's basically what this is here. So he's like, uh, we intercepted a call between Agent Hill and, and Fury. We haven't decoded it yet, uh, but apparently they're AWOL. Right, okay. So Sam, uh, Sam, Wils uh, Sam Wilson. So Nick Fury's going to walk. Uh, there's clearly they're clearly scrolls. It's pretty obvious the way they're looking at him. And then then he gets thrown into a truck and driven to Olivia Coleman, which I I, I can't remember if she's supposed to be a, be a villain or not. Uh, she's very strange. Uh, guys bring a, bring him in. He's like, oh, they they were extraordinary, you know, something along those lines. And she's like, extraordinary. Usually they barely scratch the surface of mediocrity. Then why do you employ them? Why do you employ these guys if they're to you mediocre? Again, that that makes Olivia Coleman's character look like a fucking idiot, uh, not the other way around. So Sam Jackson puts a puts a little a little spy camera there, uh, and they start start chatting. In a nutshell, this scene is: Oh, you're you're old, Nick Fury. You're old. You're you're not in the in fit shape. To be able to handle the fight that lies ahead. So we get a load of that. We get a load of that later on as well. So they spend a great deal of time bringing down Nick Fury. <sighs> great. Great. You know, it's typical. It's, it's very, very typical. How many times have we seen this at this point with, with Marvel? So many times. So it's become very, very frustratingly boring. Uh, oh, we got another. We know got another man. That's, he's he's, an, he's just an old fucker now. Useless. What use is he to the situation? It's fucking Nick Fury. It's Nick Fury, and you're you, you know you're trying to bring him down like that. Uh, so yeah, basically the conversation is that well he asks uh, about the cash in Kazakhstan. That's what he. That's what he. He's trying to find out about. Um. Yeah, do you know about the heist in Kazakhstan? That's that's what what he says, uh, and she's like, "The fact you don't know tells me a lot about this new old Nick Fury." What? what? Again, we we just we just keep being told, "Oh, he's different. He's different." All right, uh, why is that though? Are we are we gonna get to see that? Maybe a flashback? No. Maybe start the episode with that? No. Nah, fuck that. So, yeah, she's just, you know, I think the snap changed you. Taught you that no matter how hard you fight for what's right, there's always someone stronger to undermine you. What? Right. You know, I don't know where she's pulling that from. Pulling it out her ass, I would imagine. Uh, so, yeah, she's just like this old Nick Fury. Well, Nick Fury says, I've had 30 years experience with the scrolls. She's like, nah, nah, you, 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 no, you. You're not worth it, Nick. You're not worth it for, for some apparent, unapparent reason. So, yeah, she's just like, you, you should go back to your space station. You're not, what did she say? You're in no shape to fight what lies ahead. Right, okay. 
So that's what we're doing. We're just trying to bring him down a bit like we've done with every other fucking character at this point. Um, so nothing new has changed. We then go to this guy walking to the gate. This is the scroll compound. So they drive off. They talk shite. It's Daenerys. So this is that's where they're hiding. And they haven't thought, oh, maybe we'll do it. We'll do a flyover, try and find out where these fuckers are. Because they're not hiding. They're out in the open. They're out in the open. If you already know that they're able to, that they're immune to radioactive stuff, then why wouldn't you just have a flyover and go, oh, there's people down there. They shouldn't be. So they must be scrolls. You know, it's very, very simple. So you got kids running about. We get more exposition about how not everybody here is a part of the resistance. Again, I don't know what they're resisting. Uh, this isn't your planet. This isn't your planet. Or rather, you just fuck off. Uh, that that would be your best bet. Uh, but what apparently what we're getting? Well, I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. So yeah, he's like, oh, you get your new place in a bit. They go down here. They're they're taking people's like human faces, like off them. They put a human in front of this guy. They say, right, take his face, and then they mind rape him. I, I don't I don't necessarily well, no. They take his. They take the guy's mind, his memories, everything he knows. Uh, so, it, you know, his personality. I think that's what they're up to. Uh, so then we go back to Nick Fury because he's, he's put that little bug in Olivia Coleman's office. So we now, so we now get the information about the. There's only five people that can build these dirty bombs. Are there five people in the world that can build d dirty bombs? Be more than that. So she's like, it's this guy. So they're like, right, well, we know where to go now. We know where to go. So that's what that is. Um, and then this is, so this is our villain. He is Gravik or Gravik. You know, it doesn't really matter, does it? Fucking hell, who cares? Uh, and, uh, you know, one thing the writer on this show has said about this villain is that he's in the morally grey area. He then proceeds at the end of the episode to bomb a large group of people. Morally grey. Right, okay. Uh, so we've got another writer that doesn't actually know what the fuck he's writing. Uh, so this guy comes in, he's like, oh, we've got word that Nick Fury's back, but we ain't got to worry about him because he's fucking old. So we're, we're still continuing with that. He's old and he's, he can barely see even out of his good eye. Uh, so why are you even bringing this up then? Uh, but you probably should worry. It's it's Nick Fury. I, I I don't know in what what Marvel universe we live where Nick Fury is not treated as as some type of uh, issue that may get in your in the way of your plans. Uh, but no, he's just old now. He's just fucking old. He, he was he's been old in the entire MCU. So I don't know why it's all of a sudden now an issue. So he's like, the the plans will continue. We're gonna be, we're gonna take this Earth from the humans. So Daenerys Targaryen gets sent off to get a bomb. She's going to pick up the dirty bomb. So she goes there. So she's going in there. We've also got the MI6 because Olivia Coleman has to do with the MI6. So Talos impersonates one and then knocks out the other one, uh, as Nick Fury has told him to do. She goes and collects the bombs, and then they go in just after she leaves. Uh, they go in there. It turns out that Nick Fury's midlife crisis was creating the, the Avengers. That was his midlife crisis, the Avengers. That is, that's the wording you're, you're going to use for that, yeah? Because uh, it, does, it does nothing but shit on uh, what came before it, really. That's how, that's how it comes across. So they go in here. She walks off. Yeah, she's already out of there. Uh, this guy, well, well, Kobe Smulders sees Daenerys Targaryen walking away and she's like, oh, I'm going to get out and follow her. You've got no reason to follow her. You don't know who it is. You've never seen her before. So you've you've literally got no reason to follow her, although she has to do that because the, the person that Sam Jackson is interviewing or interrogating Agent Fury kills him, meaning they can't get the information from him. So that's why Kobe Smulders has followed someone she's got no reason to follow. So that's the reason for that. 
So she follows them. They, they're talking to him. Eventually, it leads to a big fight. They get no information out of him because Nick Fury shoots him because that's something Nick Fury would do, even though he knows this guy has important information. Uh, you've, again, it's very lucky that Kobe Smulders has decided to follow this to her random person. So it's just a big fight breaks out. He kills him. Kobe Smulders is following uh, Gaia, I think her name is. Uh, but oh no, stupid Agent Hill managed to get get dealt with by little little girl. Uh, you know, I guess the scrolls are, uh, they've got a lot more strength. So then, out of nowhere, after Kobe Smulders gets beaten, then Talos comes out. He just comes out of nowhere. It's like Kobe Smulders didn't say, "Hey, Talos, come and meet me down here, will you?" He just turns up. He just turns up. And then it turns out to be, oh, it's his daughter. She doesn't know that her mum's dead. So he tells her that. And that, I guess, changes her mind on bombing civilians. Uh, he lets her get away with the bombs as well, by the way. he go, he, he's, he's asking, oh, give me the bombs. Can I have the bombs? She pushes him back and he, he lets her run away with the bombs. What the fuck are you doing? I don't care that if it's your daughter. She's got a load of bombs. So it's your fault. It's literally your fault why later on a big group of people end up dying in a bombing. That's your fault for letting her just run off with it. Great. Great. You know, you fucking idiot. Uh, and, you you know, you would think with them being on comms with Nick Fury that Nick Fury would, would be waiting around the corner to get this offer. Nice. No, he's, he's disappeared from the script. He's disappeared. So she gets away with the bombs. Uh, uh, Talos done that, so he's responsible, uh, responsible for that, for just letting her go, so then we get, I believe we've seen a clip of this, uh, he's told by a random stranger, uh, what does he get called, um, I think we're on my last page here, that there's like a guy in the bar that catches, catches him, catches Nick Fury staring in the mirror, uh, and says, you'll, you'll never be the man you once were. You know, just fuck off. Whatever. So then Kobe Smulders says to him, oh, you're talking to the locals, are you? And he's like, oh, how, how do you think we stop the Cold War from getting hot? Spooks like me. And then Kobe Smulders said, says, you're not allowed to say that. And he says, no, I'm allowed to say it. You're not. The word spooks, which means... That you're, you know, you're essentially a ghost. You're a ghost from the system. That is what it means. Anything else, I mean, that's your problem. So that's what he's doing there. Uh, and here we get her bringing him down a notch. Uh, she, what does she says to him? Say to him. Uh, she's like, "Why did you leave?" And he says, "I had a crisis of faith." That's, that's all we get on it. That's all we get on it. Unfortunately, we're not going to go into detail on that. Uh, you know, we're not going to do some character stuff or anything like that. Now, nah, we're just going to say, I had a crisis of faith. I would like to see what that was uh, and why you had it. Uh, so she's like, why did you come back? And it's like, well, you brought him here. You, you called him up and said, Nick Fury, can you come back down to Earth and help us? That's why he's back down here. Because uh, you're fucked up. You won't... uh, again, again, I find it funny that they're trying to bring Nick Fury down, yet they called him here. They brought him back to Earth, yet they're trying to also bring him down. Uh, so she's like, the Fury I knew was always three steps ahead. I, I know it's weird, isn't it? It's weird that he's just randomly out of character. It's very strange. Uh, she's like, you know, you're not ready for this. Uh, it's a very real threat we're dealing with. You were never the same after the blip. I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, there's no shame in walking away. Uh, when the steps are uncertain, you told you told me. So check your foot in before someone gets hurt. Funny thing about Agent Hill is I believe Kobe Smulders said in this show, her character is given much more depth. She's about to die in about five minutes. <laughs> and this is what they've done with her. There's no depth, no depth. She's just slagging off Nick Fury for no good reason. Uh, I mean, Nick Fury should really fucking backhand her for what she's just said. Um, so, yeah, that's what she's like. Uh, give her more depth, yet dies at the end of the first episode. Great. 
So he's reflecting on when it when the blip happened and stuff. Uh, she's t Daenerys has told good work. Uh, you have taken over the Bravosi. Uh, so then it turns out she's meeting up with Talos and they have a conversation. She tells him, uh, you know, again, it's it's just kind of lazily done where she switches sides. You know, she's on. She's originally on the team that's going to bomb a load of people. I, I mean, that already says a lot about you. Uh, her dad then tells her, oh, you know, you went and worked to the with the your mother's killers. So that's so she's like switch side again. You can do a lot more with that. You don't just have it. Uh, oh, I'm on this side now. I'm on this side. You know, you can go into a lot more, uh, add a little more to it. So they find she says, I'll I'll paint the bags when I go and do the drop off to get it to the place where it's going to explode. Uh, I'll paint it in infrared, so you you can watch and see uh, what bags what bags uh, like the bombs are in, so you can follow. Uh, as as it goes from one person to another. So that's what we find out there. Uh, and that brings us to the next day where they're keeping an eye on her. So there she is there. You see in the thermal, if we can see it. Uh, uh, th so that that's the thermal spray she's put on it so they can keep track of them. They, they then somehow manage to lose where the bags have gone because she's handed them off to other people. And, and Nick Fury and Agent, they've all missed it. I, I don't know what you were looking at. I guess Nick Fury was checking out some woman's tits. That seems the most likely. Uh, so they've lost them. So now they've got to, they've got to hurry. They've got to follow these bags. Uh, it turns out they're decoys. So, uh, you, you know, did, you, did your daughter know this? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. But Sam Jackson takes his eye off the ball because he sees it. I, I think he's a bit homophobic. It's quite funny the way they do it. <laughs> <laughs> he like turns round. He turns round. He sees he sees the the pride ball, and he fuck it. He, he's like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Uh, but he follows this little girl who keeps changing in the different people. That turns out to be Graven Gravik, who's the the who's the villain who's morally grey. Yet he just he's just about to kill loads and loads of people. So. He keeps following him. You're taking your eye off the ball here, Sam. Taking your eye off the ball. So, they, yeah, they, that's when they find out, oh, they're decoys. And then this guy, you know, Nick Fury has the opportunity to shoot him. So just fucking shoot him. But instead he watches him press a button and a load of explosions go off, killing hundreds. Morally grey. Morally grey area. Uh, he wants a new home, you see, so he's justified in killing a load of people. Uh, I, You know, please don't go down that route, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do. So, yeah, big explosions go off. And then Nick Fury, it turns out, oh, it's not him, and he shoots Maria Hill. So she's dead. The, so he runs off, and then the real guy comes up, real Nick Fury, and he sees her on the floor. And then that's how we end the episode. She's dead. She's dead. Apparently she was given more depth in this show. <laughs> dead after one episode. So that is the entire that is in the entire episode. I, I went a lot longer than I needed to. Because uh, there's there's very little to talk about really with this show. Uh, it's very you know, I, I skipped Gotham Knights for this. That, that's how that's how fucking bored of this show I am. I, I would rather watch Gotham Knights, because at least that's Doing things, but in a very funny, bad way. Whereas this is just like, nah, nah. We're just going to meander along, not do much. We're just going to do a load of exposition, uh, like like some of the most, some of the, some of the like most, like the most I've ever seen in a show. Just like the amount of it, when it's like you've got a you've got an entire episode of fifty minutes to work with. So all this information you put on the front end can be sprinkled throughout the episode and and everything gradually unfolds in a natural way where we actually find out about stuff you know it, it, at least in terms of Nick Fury like oh well how did he get to this point where he's now not three steps ahead how did he get there that's what I want to see that's what I want to know but we haven't done that we're probably not going to do it in this show uh, but that's episode one uh, an episode that existed 
It existed for almost an hour. Almost an hour of just existing and not doing much else. But that's episode one. If episode two is the same, episode two will be the last episode I review. Because I'm not putting up with this, just not doing anything for ages. And, and just the the exposition was killing me. It was killing me. About 15 minutes, I'm like, we're still fucking doing this. I, I was ready to just quit the episode. But that's that's episode one, I suppose. A new Marvel show. My expectation is by the time this show is complete, it would have fallen completely off a cliff. 